Talk about just the the 12th man and 106,000 second largest crowd in the history of the Let me tell you stadium. something. That atmosphere and environment tonight, you don't want to play in that, something wrong with you. That that right there, that, that recruits and the people and the love, I mean, that, that that's as good an environment and atmosphere as there is in college football, bar none. I don't care where it's at. Those people are behind you, and I'm thankful we won the game for them, and I mean that for our players, for everybody who believes in us, and our, especially our fans, though, because, listen, this, this place deserves a great football team. We're doing everything in our power to make it that way, and we're going to try to get it there. We've got a lot of work to do, and we're growing. But this, this fan base is tremendous, and the atmosphere and environment is the best in college football. Talk about what you can improve on from the time that you all met up last year at all. You know, this wasn't about <clears throat> this week getting ready to play this defense. You know, this was 12 months. So, you know, when you get embarrassed like we did a year ago, um, at least me, you know, offensively, we're going to try everything we can to figure out how to how to beat you. So. And I told them on that last drive, if we score with little to no time left on the clock, that we're going to go for two and make it. And we, I, I love the play call. And we had a three three options there and on the play, and, uh, and we just didn't convert it. So with that, I appreciate the fan experience of how fun this brand of football is to watch. I hope, I hope they enjoy the heck out of it. You know, I mean that we're going to play fast and physical in, in all three phases of the game. Um, offensively, yeah, we're probably a little bit different than what's happened. Uh, I think that's uh, the first step to, to making uh, this fan base in the state extremely proud of, of who we are on the football field. You know, elite can be a loose term. I thought that we were elite at times. I never used the term that we're elite. We didn't force turnovers enough to be elite, you know what I mean? And uh, I thought all times if you want to play in big games you got to take care of business it doesn't get much bigger than undefeated georgia undefeated Kentucky next week what's what's kind of the mentality going into that we, we 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 just discussed it briefly i just said to enjoy it for a few hours but get some sleep tonight and, and they know punch the clock on monday and coaches will be in there tomorrow morning but uh the players uh we can't see them till monday so they need to rest up heal up um get some treatment and uh, be ready to go. Oh, welcome in to the latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Bratton. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And I'm flying solo for this episode. But don't worry, got a terrific show lined up. Going to give uh, some early thoughts on the huge matchup we got here. Georgia, Kentucky, in Athens, college game day, SEC Nation. Buzz on Rocky Top. Ooh, I'm going to save a lot of the talk for Tennessee Ole Miss with Cousin Shane back on tomorrow's episode of the show. And we also got Arkansas, Auburn. We'll be talking them. But, hey, before we do that, got to mention the sponsors of the show, Prize Picks. Head on over to prizepicks.com. Use that promo code SEC. You want to help the show. This is the best way to do it. In addition, of course, to rating and reviewing, subscribing on the YouTube channel. But prizepicks.com, head on over. Our friends at Prize Picks willing to match your initial deposit all the way up to 100 bucks if you use that promo code SEC. And what that is, Daily Fantasy Sports, of course. And they're the only ones that I know that uh, you can pick college football players, SEC players, in addition to NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, they got all the sports. I think they even got UFC fighting over there. So head on over to prizepicks.com and don't forget to use that promo code SEC. But hey, before we get to, to the previews here, as we always do on our first week, our Tuesday show, recap uh, the SEC announced the kickoff times for not the upcoming weekend, obviously, but uh, two weeks away. So right now we're talking week eight kickoffs. I know we're still in week seven, but the SEC has announced the October 23rd slate of games. So let's throw that up on the screen. We've got Arkansas Pine Bluff playing Arkansas in Little Rock. That's going to be a nooner. My God, I don't know what Arkansas has done to the SEC, but this will be their fourth noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central kickoff time. What did Sam Pittman and company do to piss off the SEC office? I'll never know, but... Something's up with that. LSU at Ole Miss. That's been picked as the uh, CBS SEC game of the week. Kind of gives you an idea of how <laughs> how rough this week's slate of games is. LSU, who knows? Is Coach O even going to be there? But if he is, you know, we could have some two high-flying offenses here. Lane Kiffin, Ed Ogeron, good old buddies there. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central on CBS. Mississippi State at Vanderbilt. 
4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central on the SEC Network. Now, here we go. Night games, Tennessee at Alabama on ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central, nationally televised, third Saturday in October matchup. And then South Carolina at Texas A&M, the annual quote-unquote rivalry here. Davy Crockett rivalry, something like that, <laughs> on the SEC Network, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central uh, on the SEC Network. So, hey, not a terrific slate of games uh, for October 23rd, but, hey, that's a ways out because we got some great games here. Week 7 and some buzz. Like I said, buzz is growing there on Rocky Top. It's official, boys and girls. Checker Nealon coming back to Nealon Stadium for Lane Kiffin's return as a head coach. Ole Miss at Tennessee. I mean, the fireworks, the, the over-under is 80 right now, I believe. Ole Miss, slight favorite. I think it's two and a half right now. Arguably the two highest scoring offenses. Two of the most explosive, potent offenses, not only in the SEC, but in the country right now. Hendon Hooker, Hendo Cinco, as they like to call him now. He scored four or five touchdowns a game. He is lighting up the scoreboard for the Vols. Cannot wait for this one. And again, I know fans. some fans were wondering, why the hell don't we go black jerseys for this one? Again, same thing I said last week. Lane Kiffin would have made it all about himself. Now we get back to arguably the same level of anticipation, maybe even more, because there's not many sites better than the checker Nealon campaign there that uh, they have on Rocky Top. Of course, uh, I believe the first time they broke this out was the win over Florida that broke the streak in that matchup. So this is what we're getting here on a nationally televised broadcast here between Ole Miss and Tennessee. Cannot wait for it. Done with the black. Going back to the traditional Tennessee orange and white. That's the way it should be. But, you know, I've heard some people say maybe some added pressure on this for Josh Heupel. I ain't buying it. Now, Josh Heupel's got a lot to gain this weekend playing Lane Kiffin and company. We know Tennessee's love affair with Lane Kiffin. Cousin Shane was <laughs> the one driving that bus during the coaching search. Everybody wanted them. Lane Kiffin back on Rocky Top. But obviously it didn't happen. And, hell, it's working out well for Tennessee because Josh Heupel has got this thing rolling. And I think this is a real opportunity for all these Kiffin lovers there on Rocky Top. He's got an opportunity to show them, you know, who's the better coach. Uh, obviously, these two have faced, I believe, twice during um, Josh Heupel's time at UCF, and I believe Josh Heupel went 2-0 and in those games. Now, of course, uh, UCF, FAU, two different uh, programs on, on different levels here, and Ole Miss, Tennessee on equal playing fields, and th those games are not going to factor in in any way on who's going to win this Saturday, but I'm just saying – I mean, Josh Heupel's got the early edge on Lane Kiffin, so something to think about this week on Rocky Top. But, of course, we'll, we'll talk more. I really want to hold my tongue. I'm biting my tongue here, waiting for Cousin Shane. I know he's going to want to do a deep dive on this one. And Cousin Shane and even the flying Hawaiian, we're all going to be on Rocky Top. We're in the orange section. We're going to be at this game. Maybe we'll get something going for uh, some kind of tailgating festivities there, but cannot wait for that matchup. But, Hey, we got another monumental matchup here. So let's kick it all down to Athens, where now we got officially the number one team in the nation. I've been saying it damn near all season. Georgia, number one in the country, both polls with Alabama losing to Texas A&M. The only two undefeated teams in the SEC meeting this weekend in Athens as Kentucky, Red Hot Kentucky, comes to town to face these Georgia Bulldogs. And I don't want to say pressure's on Georgia because, uh, you know, heavy, heavy favorite. Favorite to now, in my mind, win the SEC, win the national championship like I've been saying all along. But uh, with Alabama going down, more and more people jumping on the Georgia bandwagon. How does that affect this team? We've not seen any letdown from Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs this season. Not thinking we're going to get much of it in this one either. And... I know, obviously, JT Daniels probably not going to suit up in this game. Stetson Bennett's been looking better and better as he 
as the season comes along as he has had to assume start and roll there back in Athens once again. And I think that's the only way Georgia loses this game is if somehow Stetson Bennett, the bad Bennett, if you want to call it, resurfaces from last season where we have turnovers and you know can't push the ball down the field, getting the passes batted down at the line of scrimmage like we saw against Alabama. And hell, even if you want to go back to uh, the Florida game, Georgia started hot in that one, injuries, and then the defense kind of caved. And we ain't seeing that from this Georgia Bulldogs defense this season. So we've been in this spot before. The Arkansas game had so much hype. College game day, of course, was in town. Now they're coming back for the Kentucky matchup along with SEC Nation. It's been a while since both of those pregame shows have been in the same location, but that just gives you an idea of how big this game will be. But make no mistake, I mean, I know Georgia, we're all sitting here telling them they're the greatest defense ever been told. <laughs> I ain't buying that quite yet. I do think they're the best defense in the country based on what we've seen thus far. But they're going to be really tested here with a Kentucky offensive line. Chris Rodriguez is heating up. Cavassier Smoke just had his best game. Double-headed monster there at running back for Kentucky. And Will Levis, I know he's been throwing too many interceptions for my liking this year, but last week against LSU, this was his best game to date. So there's a lot to like about the Kentucky Wildcats heading into this matchup. And how will Georgia respond now that uh, they are officially number one in the polls? That's something Kirby Smart addressed along with Kentucky's offensive line how outstanding that group is. And once again, Kirby challenging the fans to show up like you did when we needed you the most against Arkansas. They were huge in that game. Arguably the difference, if you want to say getting Arkansas in a hole, they could not climb out of. A lot of that had to do with the outstanding home field advantage there in Athens, something Kirby addressed on Monday. Kirby, I got a feeling I know the answer to this, but I got to ask it anyway. I mean, it isn't, you guys are number one. I mean, this is a plateau of sorts, and I know it's where you finish, but do you take any satisfaction or allow yourself a moment to, you know, appreciate where you've built the program in your time here? It's just a number, right? I mean, I don't see a plateau, not a whole lot different plateau. The goal is to be uh, number one at the end of the season. You always know that. Everybody's goal is there, but to, to have an opportunity to do that, you got to be in the four, and that's the most critical part. So we won't get caught up in that, and we'll let you guys write about it, and that's not a burden we carry. The burden we carry is how we play. Coach, I want to ask you about uh, Kentucky's offensive line. Is this the best offensive line you guys have faced to date? Yeah, for sure. They've got, uh, I think, four draftable prospects, guys going to go high, in their tackle, transfer tackles, really good player. Center's a really good player. If Ordner, I mean, they, they've always had a good offensive line. But they had a good offensive line last year, and I think four of the five or three of the five are back, and then the transfer from LSU is a really good player. So, Kennard's one of the fit, most physical guys we've ever played against. He is huge, uh, long arms. Uh, they, they, they're committed to the run game and what they do. Uh, very physical and really good team. And I think – you know, people don't understand that because they look at them last year and, you know, they didn't have a lot of the same weapons in the pass game. The quarterback wasn't uh, a thrower like this guy is, and they got a really good team. So a lot of, lot, of, uh, lot of respect for how they play. Kirby, you challenged the fans before the Arkansas game to, to show out at noon, and I, I, I think it's safe to say that that was effective and they were really loud. Do you have anything you want to say to them this week? I mean, yeah, it's always the case, right? I think this game speaks for itself, what it means, who we're playing, uh, what the rankings are, what's at stake, you know, when you talk about the East. So I, I think our, our fans are educated enough to know the, the importance of this one and their impact could be the difference in the game. And I don't think sometimes they acknowledge that because they think that, you know, everything's going to be easy and it's going to be home. And you, you, can't, you can't think that way. You can't be apathetic as a fan and think that, oh, well, you know, we're Georgia. That, that's not the case because this is a high, high quality football team and we need the extra advantage of playing at home just like we had to go up against it last week uh, going to Auburn. So we need that same advantage this week. All right, so jumping into the other side of this, uh, let's kick it over to Lexington where Mark Stoops also met with the media here on Monday. And unfortunate news here because 
defensive lineman Octavius Oxidine, who was just named co-defensive lineman of the week in the SEC, out for the season. Nose guard McQuain McCall also going to be out for this game. So Kentucky's kind of going into it, limping a bit after their dominant performance against LSU. And, of course, Georgia is the last team in the country you want to go in limping against. So, hey, it's going to be a monumental task for Kentucky to go on the road and prove that they belong not only as the SEC elite, but nationally elite. And that's exactly what they will prove if they go into Georgia and pull off this upset on the road between the hedges against the mighty Georgia Bulldogs. But, hey, this is what you've been building for if you're Mark Stoops. Every few years, you're conquering a new challenge. You're beating Florida. Hell, you've beaten them twice now, but uh, for years and years, what was it? I think it was 31 years in a row, you, you couldn't get over that hump. Mississippi State was a hump you had to get over. Tennessee was a hump you had to get over. Now you've beaten them in Neyland Stadium. I mean, basically every year you're breaking barriers in Lexington under Mark Stoops, and the biggest one of all, the Georgia Bulldogs, stand in your way of reaching Atlanta. And without a doubt, this has got to be the best Kentucky team of the Mark Stoops era. But uh, the way Coach Stoops sees it, this Georgia Bulldogs defense is probably the best defense he's seen in the SEC since he's been in the SEC. And we're going on a decade here. So, uh, you know, that just emphasizes the monumental task in front of the uh, Kentucky Wildcats this week, doing it a little bit shorthanded. But like I said, with Will Levis heating up, the best he's looked all season last week against LSU, you got to take that into consideration. He's got to carry that over. And it looks like, not officially ruled out, but Josh Ali, the team's second leading receiver, doubtful for this game, according to Mark Stoops. Uh, Let's kick it over to Coach. Talks about uh, 2018 Georgia game. It's hard to forget that one. That was the the great Kentucky 10-win team that, uh, you know, they weren't ready for this. They played Georgia with everything on the line, just like it will be here on Saturday. They came up well short against a really, really good Georgia team. This Georgia team's even better. But on the flip side, this Kentucky team's a hell of a lot better, in my opinion, than they were in 2018. So how does that play a factor into this one? On Will Levis and his continued growth in the offense? Remember, you know, it's easy to forget. You know, he kind of like we've been saying with Zach Calzada, only starting a couple games here. Basically the same thing for Will Levis and Liam Cohen and their time together. I mean, they're still growing as a uh, play caller and a quarterback and getting comfortable with each other with live bullets. So maybe they've ironed out basically all the issues they had and feeling great. It's obviously not going to help that you're going up against uh, mighty Georgia's defense. But now that they have a feeling out process that takes time to look at, uh, look no further than Tennessee and Josh Heupel and Hendon Hooker. I mean, it took them several weeks as well to get in rhythm, to get on the same page on game day, and it certainly seems like Will Levis and Liam Cohen are at that stage um, in their time together. Given the looks and blitz packages Georgia likes to bring defensively, what kind of challenge? I mean, it's going to be big, obviously, for Will Levis. Could you talk about that one? I'm sorry. Repeat that, Dick. Given the, the looks and blitz packages that Georgia likes to use, talk about the challenge for Will this week. Yeah, they, they put a lot of pressure on you because they're, they're good just – you know, just in lining up in their base defense and playing, they're they're good. And then you start mixing in any kind of pressures or different looks, and uh, you know, getting the, the the big thing for Will will be it, him having some time. You know, ha, you know the protection being good, guys getting open. Um, it'll be a challenge for everybody. I mean, they give up what 200 yards a game or something ridiculous. Uh, they're 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 number one in our league by like a hundred and some yards, and. Uh, Giving up fifty some a game in rushing. I mean, they're 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 playing at a ridiculous level defensively. That's true. Coach, uh, is it fair to say that uh, Levis is a uh, football player? Yeah, yeah, he's. Football player. Uh, I mean, uh, football player. Yeah, he's. He's blown like a box and he's ready to go. That, uh, it's fair to say, Lonnie, that he's a good he's a good <laughs> football player, and just uh, just with the way he runs, the way he ad libbed a little bit, we had a little. 
We do a lot of different things, as you could tell, with a lot of different shifts, motions, uh, different actions in the run game. Uh, you know, whether it's bad snap or a bobbled snap, he, he's made plays with certain things. He has. The other day, we were mixed up on a play. He turns around and runs it for eight yards or something. You know, so just things of that nature he is. He's playing very good football. And really, watching that film um, will really uh, definitely played uh, a complete game. You know, I I mentioned after the game that, you know, I thought he really started well, but really he played good the entire game. He really did some good things. Some of those throws he made, even on on the incompletion of Wandell, was just a beautiful pass. And uh, he just, uh, you know, he, he played at a very high level and threw, threw some really impressive uh, throws. You've mentioned several times every game is a learning opportunity, win or lose. You've got to learn similar position 2018 Anything you learn from that experience that can be applied for? I, I think you do. I mean, there's nothing for me to talk about with that or anything, but the guys know. I mean, the, the players that have been around, as I mentioned, the leaders, guys that have been here, you know, for three, four, five, six years, um, they uh, understand the, the situations and different, you know, learning opportunities and uh, things that we learned from that game. I mean, I'm not going to get into it because it was two years ago, you know, but. I believe as an organization, you get better with every opportunity. And uh, I think we're getting better each and every day. What is? Is this the best defense you've been It's hard to argue that. You know, I, I, I really haven't put much thought into other great defenses. You know, we certainly have played a lot of, you know, great defenses uh, um, through, through my time here. Um, I, I didn't put any thought in that, but you watch these guys on film, and it's it's another level. It's it's another level of good. It's uh, really impressive what they're doing defensively. All right, so there you got it from Coach. And, man, I cannot wait for this. I mean, this is going to be an epic battle, basically SEC East on the line. And, you know, I think if you're Kentucky, you got to like the spot because no one – outside of Lexington is going to be picking you to win this game. That's basically, uh, you know, how this program was built. Everyone's picking against you the entire time, waiting for Mark Stoops to fail. Mark Stoops' program is basically built on Georgia guys that Georgia didn't want, Florida guys that Florida didn't want, Ohio guys that Ohio State didn't want. Now's the time you go out here and prove all these people wrong. Prove the mistakes they made during your recruitment and – Everything's on the table here for the Kentucky Wildcats. And, man, you just got to go out there and seize it. And this is what you've been building for for years and years and years. Now is the time to go out there and prove you belong as an elite in the country. And, hell, if you do it, you may be the number one team in the country come Sunday. That's Let's not overlook that fact. I mean, whose resume would be better than beating if, – if Kentucky manages to beat – Florida Gators, Georgia Bulldogs. I don't know. I mean, that's something we got to consider here. All right, moving on, though. Let's kick it on day to Fayetteville. The Razorbacks having to bounce back from another tough loss after Saturday's disappointing defeat at the hands of Ole Miss on the road in Oxford. But I can almost guarantee you there's not going to be any hangover because we all know who's coming to town. Auburn Tigers, well, you got to feel like they stole one from you last year with the Bo Nix backwards spike, the only backwards spike in the history of football that's been honored. It's going to be very easy, I would imagine, for Sam Pittman to get his team up for this task of facing the Auburn Tigers, given all that. And, hey, I think it works out well for the, the Razorbacks, given the fact that uh, Auburn just got physically manhandled by the Georgia Bulldogs. And that not necessarily – anything to do with uh, you know the caliber of Auburn as a team because I think basically everybody that goes up against Georgia is going to get manhandled. Arkansas knows all about that. So, But you're getting them in a good spot. You know, Auburn had so much hope and expectations leading up to that Georgia game. We're not able to get it done. The receivers really started to, to crack last week. I mean, that was a huge flaw. Ole Miss took advantage of your defense. Well, 
Auburn unlikely to be able to follow that recipe because they don't have the receivers. And they certainly don't have the quarterback outside of the one game against LSU where Bo Nix went insane mode. Is he really going to do that once again? I don't know. It seems unlikely, uh, particularly against an Arkansas defense that it looks a hell of a lot better than LSU's, even though they just gave up all those points to Ole Miss. I think Ole Miss is going to wreck a lot of people's defenses this season in the SEC. So, But you're going to have to do it without Dalton Wagner, unfortunately. He's injured, injured his finger, according to Sam Pittman. He's going to be out for a while. That's tough on the offensive line. But uh, aside from that, I mean, I really like Arkansas's chances here. And I don't think you can get a better opponent going back to last season and the game getting taken from you than to get the Auburn Tigers after losing two in a row. You talk about cleaning your slate, wanting to get revenge, wanting to get up for a, after having two tough losses. I think the Auburn Tigers are the perfect opponent for the Razorbacks to face. And they got arguably the hottest quarterback in the SEC on their side, K.J. Jefferson. That's something Sam Pittman touched on. I love his uh, joke about – teaching KJ his high-flying moves, uh, and I'll be in the Razorbacks' favorite first time in it in an SEC game under Sam Pittman. So let's kick it over to Coach. Also, as, as Knicks present similar kind of dual th- uh, dual threat problems that Corral did, or are they different different styles? I think he's incredible, Bo. I mean, he, he uh, extends plays as good as anybody in the country. I mean, you can't get him on the ground. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to work a ton of scramble drill um, because uh, he he extends plays. And uh, certainly he's fast. Uh, I just really like him and, and uh, think he's a, a big-time competitor. But, yeah, I mean, those are things we're real concerned about him running the football as well. What was y'all's evaluation of KJ? I mean, was that one of the better quarterback performances? It wasn't bad, was it? Um, I, you know, I taught him. I didn't think he'd ever use it, but I taught him that where he where he launched from the five and scored. I just I didn't think he'd ever use it, but I was proud to, you know, he came over and thanked me for teaching him that. Um, I don't know. It wasn't any competitive, and um, you know, made some really nice throws. The one he at the end of the game, I thought it was an overthrow, you know, and then we just went up and got it, you know, but um, he's tough. I mean, he took some hits, you know, and uh, he just coming into a well-rounded guy and, you know, you have him two and a half more years, you know, and I think that really bodes well for the University of Arkansas, but uh, he's I know one thing. I know the fans believe in him, and I do, but our team really believes in the guy. And he doesn't say a whole lot, you know, but uh, he's one of the most popular guys in there because of how he handles his business and what he'll do on the football field. I just, I mean, can you imagine where he started this year and then where he's at right now? It's it's really incredible. And he'll get better, too, because he's a hard worker. You guys are a slight favorite in this game. I think it's the first time since you got here you've been an SEC favorite. You know, no, course, I know it is. Of course, course, Texas is kind of a quasi SEC team, power five. So it's first. We well, weren't favored there either, Bob. Yeah, it, it, it's the uh, first time you've been favored against a power five team. Just how, how does that feel? What What do you think? I don't know. I mean, I was, I don't know. I don't know if it has any outcome on the game or not. But I'd rather be favored than twenty two point underdogs. I mean. Uh, I don't know what it means to be honest with you, but you know we are favored against Auburn, so we've come a little little ways, you know. So we'll find out. I mean, that that obviously, if that was the case, we'd be uh, going in this game. We'd be two and fourteen, you know. But we still got to play the game. But so I don't really know how to answer the question. All right, and one final thing here from Sam Pittman. This really. You know, we noted it on the last show, but we got to stop these damn fake injuries. And I don't even know how you do it, but I think basically you got to, if a player goes down, I don't think he should be able allowed to come back in the game for the rest of the series, maybe even the quarter. The quarter, that may be a bit harsh, but I just don't think you can have him in there. Hell, it's a player safety issue. If you're hurt, if you're legitimately hurt, you probably shouldn't be back out there right away either, should you? 
But clearly, Ole Miss instructed some guys to go down against Arkansas. Sam Pittman noticed it. He's not strictly calling these guys out, but his comments here say it all. And I also think that, you know, maybe the the only workaround that I can see, and this will be tough to manage, but I think maybe you got to allow defenses to substitute at will. Now, you don't stop the game. You let the offense continue. So I'd be at a huge, huge gamble for the defense to do this. But that may be the only way to stop, uh, you know, to kind of ensure player safety but still allow substitutions. Maybe it prevents some of this. You know, you're not going to be rotating linemen in and out from the sidelines while the offense is, is going here because that would end a disaster. But maybe you can flip corners, flip safeties. I don't know. But that's just something – that I've been thinking about because we got to stop this trend. And I don't know how you do it because you, you certainly will never question a player. You don't want injured players out on the field and you don't want them to be penalized for legitimate injuries either. So it's just a, it's a, the sports in a tough spot in this little aspect. And I think allowing defenses to substitute while that may be, uh, you know, a little bit of an advantage to the defense, Hell, the defense needed some advantages in today's college football high flying. So, I don't know. That's just something to think about. But uh, that's something clearly still on Sam Pittman's mind when he was asked about it on Monday. Coach, it seemed like Ole Miss's uh, defensive line had quite a few injuries during the game mm. that kind of slowed things down. I think they came what, back though. Yeah, uh, healthy enough to get I, back in there. I think based on what I was reading, you could maybe submit some of those to the NCAA. I wonder if you've done that or no, do you have any ideas? No, you can't. On... No. The rule, the rule has to change. I mean, right now it's a – there's no penalty. And I'm not saying the guys weren't hurt. I mean, they may have been hurt. I'm, I'm not a medical doctor, you know, so – but a lot of them, you know, cramped up or whatever happened to them and – no, that I think the, the rules committee's got to look at that. You know, they wait every two years to do it. And I think we I'm on the board of trustees too. I think I think really have to look at that, you know. Um, that's the first time that many injuries had happened in a game this year. And uh uh last year it happened to us a few times, but um we've got to you know, we'll address that. And I'm again I'm not saying they were hurt or weren't hurt or whatever, it just there are a whole bunch of them. All right, last stop around the league. Let's kick it on down to the Plains where the Auburn Tigers having to bounce back from a tough defeat to the Georgia Bulldogs, which, again, a lot of people, I keep saying everybody that faces the Georgia Bulldogs probably going to suffer a tough defeat this season. So this is going to be a tough spot for the Auburn Tigers. I mean, your secondary just got exposed a little bit by – Stetson Bennett, Lad McConkley, you're certainly going to be facing a more potent offensive attack with K.J. Jefferson, Traylon Burks, and some of these other targets that uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks have in Kendall Brow's system. Of course, you'll be getting Smoke Monday back. He was uh, instru- He's so instrumental in that Auburn defensive backfield, it's kind of hard to judge You know how much success that Georgia was having was uh, responsible for given the fact that Smoke got ejected needlessly from that Georgia game. But we kind of saw it, man. We, Bo Nix kind of came back down to earth a little bit. I mean, he, he was not bad by any means, but he just wasn't getting that help. And, of course, he came out after the game and kind of fired some shots at the refs. But this is going to be a tall, tall task, I think, going into an Arkansas Razorback Stadium. They're fired up from last season. This is uh, one of the ones I think they had circled all season. You know, to get to where they need to be, to get to a bowl game, to get to a solid bowl game, climb up these SEC West standings, they have to beat the Auburn Tigers. They're going to be motivated as hell to show that they should have won last season. Now they're going to try to send Auburn home packing. Like I said, this is a tough, tough spot. But where you got some hope, you got Tank Bigsby, you got Jarquez Hunter. I mean, he's running like a madman. Two-headed attack here. Maybe uh, the Bo Nix from the Auburn game shows up in this one. That's your recipe for going on the road and solving these issues. 
Now, on the flip side, Georgia ran loose for 200 yards. Again, that's Georgia, but Arkansas is going to try to do the same damn thing. And they arguably have just as good of a rushing attack as them Bulldogs. So that is going to be a major, major challenge for these Auburn Tigers. And again, maybe starting to see some cracks in the secondary. Uh, because if, if Georgia is able to expose you with uh, half their receiving core out and their starting quarterback out, what do you think K.J. Jefferson and company is going to do to you? So this uh, potentially could be a really rough setup here for the Auburn Tigers. But on the flip side, Arkansas has never been favored in an SEC game under Sam Pittman. So, hey, it's finally happening. How will the Razorbacks handle being the favorites in an SEC game? That remains to be seen, obviously, because it's not happened. So that is just something to, to figure into the game here. But – Let's kick it over to Brian Harson. He shares his thoughts on the matchup on Auburn defending the run and what is going on in the secondary there on the Plains. Earlier this season, you wanted to be balanced, but that started with being a downhill run the ball team uh, through two SEC games. You've got 91 passes, the 58 runs. How do you get back to running the ball with teams seemingly loading the box and, and kind of daring you to throw? And is that the blueprint you expect uh, Arkansas to take? defensively against your offense on Saturday? Yeah, well, yeah, ideally, you want to run the football. Uh, one way to do that is is stop losing early. Uh, that's a way to do that. So don't get behind and, you know, stay in a position where you can run the football. Um, you know, some of those, you know, you just start kind of looking at the end of the game. You got to throw it because you're losing. And so, uh, you know, we got to keep the ball game closer. So you can run the ball more effectively. Um, uh, you know, we say what we want to do. That that's that's the identity that we're working towards is is being a team that can run the ball, um, that can be physical. Um, yes, we want to be downhill, and all those things. But you know, we have to actually do that. And you know, we've got opportunities to do that. Um, we just are, we're going to have to continue to keep working on it and getting better at it. It doesn't change who we want to be. It doesn't change the, the fact that that's uh, a goal of ours uh, in the identity of what this offense should look like. Um, at the end of the day, we've got to do it. And we've got to stay, you know, in the ball game. Um, you know, we get ourselves behind. And, you know, now that being said, it's not, it's not all run. It is balance. There's got to be some balance in that balance in the pass game. Um, you know, has got to show up. You, know, you still have to, you don't want to just throw it to throw it for statistics. You want to throw it so you can complete passes and, and move the ball and get yourself in position where you can get some rhythm on the offensive side. And I think that's what throws do. They give you rhythm. Uh, they give you an opportunity to move the ball. It gets other playmakers on your team involved as well. Um, so you're trying to spread that ball around and give guys opportunities. But the identity of, of running the football, you still want to be a physical team that runs it um, and that allows you to then be able to throw the ball and uh, we got to create plays on the perimeter as well. So at the end of the day, I think it's a little bit skewed uh, when you look at the games that, that you know we're behind, especially in the Georgia game. We felt like we had to throw it a little bit more to get back into it. Um, they're good up front and you know that didn't obviously work for us. So, uh, but it doesn't change the identity of who we want to be and how, and how we want to have balance. What are you seeing on on the defensive uh, in the defensive secondary in terms of some of the big plays that that continue to happen? Georgia hit a few. Is it communication? Is it just you know putting guys on an island sometimes and, and, it's, and it's a risk? Like what are you seeing in, in the defense kind of continuing to give up some of those big plays? For the most part, I think we've we've communicated well in the back end. Um, when you're talking about wide receivers and DBs and, and plays like that, it just it comes down to winning your one on ones is what it comes down to a lot of times. And you got to be able to cover and and challenge the wide receivers. Uh, guys will make plays. There's going to be times where, you know, there's a spectacular catch. Uh, but if it's contested and you're in a position, you know, that's the best we can do from a defensive standpoint. We want to be in the best position. We want to play the ball. We want to we want to get our eyes around. We want to be um, in a position to to knock the ball down or have a chance to pick it, um, and you know it really comes down to that. It comes down to just you know your fundamentals, your techniques of playing that position. A lot of times, um, 
you know, putting our guys in the position. I think we've done that for the most part, you know, but when you get into a one-on-one, that's, that's why you spend all that time practicing to, to prepare yourself for the one-on-one situation. Zone is different. Um, zone, your eyes are a little different. You know, your, your field area uh, that you cover is different than man. And so a lot of times it comes down to those, those man situations, one-on-one opportunities, and you got to get a chance to win it. And so that, that goes back to preparation. It goes back to techniques. It goes back to uh, understanding who you're playing against, like what do they do with these players, how do they utilize them, um, you know, and just doing your homework and then, uh, and then having yourself prepared in practice. So those are things, um, and that's probably not all of them, but those are some of the things that, that I've seen that we're going to continue to keep getting better at and that we're going to focus on and that we need to be ready for every single week when we go out there and play. That's, that's kind of football one-on-one, uh, that you got to be ready for that uh, every time and, you know, put yourself in the best position to, to be successful on the play. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the show. Cousy Shane will be back in action on the next show. We'll be breaking down Florida LSU, Tennessee Ole Miss, and a whole lot more. So I appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by. Catch you on the next one.